musicians in bars getting beer. See, it's narrow. It's not funny. If they don't know you already, which they already know you. I think they might. They might. Tell us about your band. We're narrow and Layton. We're just a cover band. We do some Zeppelin. We do some Beatles. There's some Alice in Chains. Oh, geez, man, I can't even think off the dome right now. There's too many tunes that we do. You do millions of tunes. You've done all kinds of different uh, gigs. And that's acoustic it. Acoustic as well? That's it, man. Acoustic. We're acoustic duo as well, and then we're here with the full band right now. So, so James, tell us, uh, tell us about your family history. Oh, man, my, my pops, Phil Naro. That's why that's I probably, have, I, whoever knows me, that's what they know me for, right? So my pops, Phil Naro, man, I'm trying to carry on the legacy that he left behind. I am so grateful for what my dad has given me and for all the talent that he he's he's taught me, you know? And just I even have his same vibe people tell me. I scare myself when I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> it is. It's uh I wouldn't call it mini film at all, but it's almost you've you've uh, you've filled the shoes, let's say. Dude. Really appreciate this. And, uh, and I know you're not trying to be, uh, you know, the same because your voice is very different. Exactly. You had a very John Anderson kind of voice. And, exactly. And you're just a rocking voice. Man. That's it, man. That's how it goes, man. Just trying to rock and roll, man. So tell us about your other musical influence, other than Dad and all the people he's had around him. Oh man, Lou Graham. Foreigner's one of my. If it, if it's not my dad, it'd be Lou Graham, you know. And if it's not Lou Graham, it's Def Leppard. And if it's not Def Leppard. It's Rush, and if it's not Rush, it's Zeppelin. So that's all my that's that's where I take my inspiration from, man. <laughs> Dude, my dad left playing with Kiss when I was born, and my mom called up Peter Chris and was like, "Phil's got to come home. He's got to come home. Like James is being born." My dad packed up and he left. You know, amazing. my dad's an amazing human being. Amazing. He was, yes. You know, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Rest in peace, buddy. Yes, brother, yes. I'll miss you. And it's great to, you know, so tell stories about Phil. But let's talk about you more. Yes, dude. So uh, you play guitar. Anything else? I play guitar, vocals, play drums, bass. That's pretty much it. Are you writing? I'm writing. I got some original music on Spotify. James Nero, look it up. I'm on YouTube as well. Got a whole bunch of covers. And uh, I'll, I'll, a bunch of my originals are on YouTube as well. Got some music videos out for them. So would love for people to check that out, you know? That's what I want to be known for, not just covers, you know? Yeah, of course. So. Of course. And that's what I want to be known for, is representing original talent in Ontario. Exactly. So you are born here. I was born here, man, yeah, yeah. Dad's from Rochester. Dad's from like Rochester. Played with Billy Sheehan and stuff. And who have you jammed with that you'd like to mention? Jeez, man. Well, next week, next week, two weeks from now, I'm opening up for Ace Freely. Oh, are you? you know, yeah, Little River Band this year. I played with Coney Hatch. We opened up for Wang Chung. I, yeah, man, just so many big, so many big acts. Is that uh, Elma? Elma Combo. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about some of the other amazing places you've played at. Well, I just got back from Detroit. I, I'm in a Doobie Brother tribute band. I do all the Michael McDonald stuff. So well, I just What's got that back. Band hey, listen to the music. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just got back from Detroit on Wednesday, and then I had to rush back home to play Jazz Fest. I've got like a string of seven gigs in a row right now. So check out, listen to the music, man. We're killer. And it, I love the Doobies as well. So if you're a Doobie fan, you've got to come see us. Absolutely. Yeah, great man. And so does this band do any Doobies? We do. We do. We do a few Doobies. I heard listen to the music. Yes, you did. Yeah, okay. You heard right. It's a little self-promotion there, I guess. I... Exactly. Cross, cross promotion. Exactly, man. Something. Exactly. Exactly. What else? You got any funny stories on the road? You know what? Nothing funny happens anymore. I feel like that was all back in the day. <laughs> well, tell me about back in the day then. Well, no, nothing's happened to me really funny on the road. You Big know? two's down. Uh, nothing's really happened to me funny. I know, I know. <laughs> nothing's really... Nothing, that was funny. That, there we go. People just kind of interrupting, coming in front of the camera. I was doing this interview once, and all these girls started coming into the shot. The guy wasn't really focused on me anymore. I, I know, I know. God damn, God damn. <laughs> No real funny stories, but just like, just cool, humbling stuff that's happened, you know? Seeing some really great bands live. Being able to tour with a tribute band is huge, man. You know, it's it's, it's supplemented my income. It's made oh, yeah. me, 
it's made me be able to not work anymore. So just be a full-time musician. Full-time musician. That's, it. That's good. Good news, man. Um, okay, I got one other question, which uh, I stole from the Woodstock movie, believe it or not. Yeah. The nerd comes in with the tie on and the leather shoes in the mud with the kids and says, why is music the great communicator? Or something like that. Okay. I don't have a London accent, so why does it reach everyone? I think it's because it's as long as the musician's putting feeling into the music that these people get, it's almost like a... It's, it's, a, it's a different feeling. Like you don't even have to understand what I'm saying. You can you can just feel the music. You know, you don't even have to speak English to understand these, these songs. A lot of people think that that it's a universal language. Yeah. And so how did how did it reach you when you? I mean, obviously it was in your blood. So yeah. so you probably grew up with a guitar in your hand. Exactly. I didn't have a choice. It was inevitable for me, man. So it was just so it was just a, a natural progression for you. Exactly. And, and and it means a lot now that you're working as a full-time musician. So tell us about your future. Just, you know, obviously doing some more originals. You know, tour I'm with the Doobie Brother tribute. I'm I'm also in a Pink Floyd tribute as well. Oh, I yeah, so and just you know, I feel like if the original music doesn't work out, I'll still be able to to just do what I'm supposed to do, which is music, playing other people's songs, which is great too, you know, no problems with that. So no matter what, I always have a, an alley to go down. Either it's touring with the tribute band, playing with these boys here, Narwin and Layton, or just doing my original music, man, or, or working on YouTube, you know, something like that. Did I ask how we reach it? Uh, you can look up James Narrow. My, my name will pop up right away, probably the first name that comes up. James Narrow, everything. On my Facebook, my Instagram, my YouTube, and yeah. What's the Pink Floyd name? Floydium. Floydium. Come check us out, man. We're playing all over the place, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. James Narrow, musicians at Pizza Nova getting a slight note. Musicians at Beaches Jazz getting fresh air. Exactly, baby. That's it. Rock and roll. Rock and roll.